For those of you who are following our weekly uh, test on taking trades simply from analysis from weekly charts, we'll know that we've now grown the account in the last couple of weeks to percent. This has been done with very low risk, i.e. the maximum risk per trade has been 1%. But an important thing to note from all of this, even though this method is working and is successful, we still have to be very wary of the news. And I explained in last week's write-up how we would have to adjust and close orders prior to important news. And I'll show you now in this on the charts what I mean by this. This is the Aussie dollar on the daily chart. And last week we were looking for a potential sell at 1.000 up here. This was a half stake sell because it was counter trend. But what I said is you specifically have to stop this trade until after Aussie dollar news on the Tuesday. This is easier on this chart. So this was the Monday. At this point here I had said to you after Sunday's close, this is where we will be looking for a potential short if price gets up here. But what I explain in the write-up is we then had to be very careful because Tuesday there was Aussie dollar interest rate news and there was a strong possibility that, price, that the Bank of Australia was going to raise the rates. And it did. And what happened? The price shot up 140 pips that day. Now, had you left the trade in, you would have got away with it because the following day we had a pullback back down and gained lots of pips. However, on the Wednesday, this major move up and break and close above, let's look on a four hour. This was the Aussie dollar news. Price then moved sideways for the next 30 odd hours. And then we had FOMC news. And FOMC news had said to, to you, cancel all pending orders prior to FOMC news. Because if the news was bad for the dollar, this would be the thing that would give price the momentum to break through major areas. And it did it here on the Aussie dollar. Bang, it went. Uh, this area, one for one, was expected to be huge again. Never been up here before. It's kept going. Gold kept going. Everything kept going because of the news. Now, it doesn't happen with everything. The news actually worked in our favor here on the dollar Swissy. We were looking last weekend uh, to short at 99, I think actually 98.80 was where I actually got in. But we were looking to short in this reason. And what we'd said was our overall target would be down here at 96.10. This trade worked perfectly for 300 and odd pips. But we got away with it with this one because price had already moved in our favor prior to NFP, uh, sorry, FOMC. So all I did then was move my stop behind. I took some of the trade off and I moved my stop lower down. And then if the FOMC news had come out positive for the dollar Swissy, I wouldn't have lost and I would have only lost some of my potential profit. As it was, this move kept going then for another few hundred pips. So on that occasion, the, the news worked in our favor. This is the euro dollar. Now the euro dollar, it wouldn't have worked uh, because this spike through here, we were looking to short here earlier in the week. Had we taken this, and this is on a weekly chart, let's go to the daily. Had we taken this on Thursday after Wednesday's FOMC, we would have lost. It would have taken our stop. This is the pound dollar. We were looking for a potential short here at 62.40. This one would have worked, but look at all this now. This is completely uh, upward moving trend. This is still a major area. This is the Aussie dollar yen. Aussie dollar yen, we were looking to short at 81.20, I believe, 81.30. This would have lost. This was the Aussie dollar news. FOMC, bang, it's gone. So the bottom line is this. If you're going to trade off the weekly charts, you still need to pay attention to major scheduled news announcements. And you certainly don't want to be exposed to one currency, for example, the dollar, uh, US dollar, on more than one open trade. Right, on to this week's weekly analysis. Last week we had lots of opportunities on weekly charts, pro probably too many. In fact, it caused problems with correlation and lots of other things. This week is a little easier in that there are fewer. This is the dollar Swissy on a weekly chart. We are in a clear downtrend. This has been going on since uh, April time. And therefore, the only way I am interested to trade is, is to short. Last week, we had a, our most successful trade on this pair by shorting around 99. I will be looking this week to short around 98.30. Counter trend traders will be interested to long at 94.62. I will not take it, will not place the order. 
But if you do look to counter trend, I would suggest, strongly suggest you only trade half your normal stake. And also watch this Bollinger Band at the weekly open. If this closes, this gives more clues to the fact price will bounce up. And if it stays open, that it will go through. This is the Euro USD. Now, on the daily chart, I can see opportunities. On the weekly here, I'm a little more nervous. Uh, we are coming up to 78.6% FIB on this pair, which until it reaches there for me on a weekly, this is still going down. Uh, on a daily, I have, uh, sorry, on a weekly, I have this trend line in, and this trend line is around 3,800. And as you can see, we've been getting higher lows. So I am more interested to long 3,800 here and to short at 14372 area. But this, I will only do half stake. This is the Aussie dollar weekly. This is easier. Aussie dollar smashed through the one for one mark on Friday. This area here, the one for one, 1,000, also happens to be 50% of last week's FIB, 50% uh, FIB of last week's movement. And therefore, a pullback to here, in my standard practice, I will look to long. I have no idea for shorting, leaving alone. So Aussie dollar yen, Aussie dollar yen, we were looking last week for bounces at 81.35. This has gone on for months. Uh, it finally broke through. It's broken the monthly 55 and 200. So for me at the moment, we are looking to go long and to go long around 81.35, possibly as far as 81.60 area, which happens to be, I think this is a monthly 200. On a short point of view, I will be interested in the 8420 area because it's 78.6 fib and we've got the 200 EMA just above this. Again, I will go half stake with this, but what I will do is I will place my stop just above the 200 EMA, which also happens to be above previous support and resistance. So I'll go above 8500. This is a pound on the weekly. Uh, main thing I'm interested in here on the weekly is a pullback to 160 with a view to a long. And then if price does break through, similar scenario we just looked on the Aussie dollar yen, is I will be looking up here at 16700, 200 EMA, previous support and resistance, previous highs and lots of other things. Euro pound. And the Euro pound is in a clear downtrend at the moment. Uh, this is a daily chart. We had a move up, started to turn, started to go down. We caught this move the other week for a few hundred pips. Uh, just on the cusp again, which was great. It looks to me now as though this is, t this is turning down. It's rejected at 78.6 on a weekly. It broke through 61.8. It's then closed below it again. So I need a pullback for a short. 8,700 may be too near on a weekly. Uh, if not, 87.36 will be of interest. It's a bit tricky, this, on a weekly. Uh, because the other point you could have up here is 87.70, so it is a bit messy. I'm more interested in this, to be perfectly honest, on intraday method. Uh, 8,600 will be very difficult for this pair to break. We have got weekly and monthly EMAs down here and a 50% FIB. Uh, so counter trend traders may be interested to long as a bounce of 8,600, but I think it would be a limited move. If you are shorting, then you want to take some of your profit or certainly move stops here because what's likely to happen is the price will come down, hit it, and boing, bounce off before hopefully then continuing the move down. So the dollar yen. Dollar yen the other week, we were looking up here to short at 8,300 area, and on a weekly chart, that's where I'll be looking. Uh, we did have movement, and there are some intraday positions I'm interested in, but overall, on a weekly, I am interested most to short 8,300 for a long-term downtrend. Uh, Counter-trend traders, again, may be interested here at 8,032, but not for me. Euro yen. Uh, this one, again, is another one that's more intraday. We have been taking bounces off this 115 area. It did pierce and spike through, uh, but the 200's rolling over and gone flat. These EMAs are pushing up. We have been bouncing between 113.40 and 115, and then down here between 112 and 113.40. Very tricky from a weekly. If it gets down to 112, yes, I would be interested to long, uh, and I will be interested to short at 115.60 area. Finally, the CAD. The CAD, again, is in a clear downtrend that's been going on all year. Uh, on a weekly chart, I will be most interested in a pullback up here to this trend line. It also happens to be 4 hour 200 at the moment. This 55 will have come down. So there'll be lots of things to support the theory here. So that would be my area. And once again, counter trend, not for me, but counter trend traders will be interested in taking bounces off this area here. 
Have a good week. Keep up to date with the stats on the MT4i stats page where I update the orders during the week and I will close things and move things depending on how important the news is on a given day. Have a good week.